seen in videos of shooting Jacob Blake seven times. Destroying stores and taking what you want is not protest, it's theft. Authorities now revealing the identity of the officer who shot the 29-year-old father in the back. I um, want to come out and say uh, that I do not support George Floyd and the media depiction of him as a martyr for black America. If you're sitting here telling me that there was no way to subdue that gentleman. 24 hours, every 24 hours, it's pain, it's nothing but pain. Or detain him, or to just, before the firing of guns. It hurts to breathe, it hurts to sleep. It hurts to move from side to side. It hurts to eat. How shocked are we that 17-year-olds with rifles decided they had to maintain order when no one else would? If you watch the video, there was multiple moments where if they wanted to, they could have they could have tackled him. They could have grabbed him. I just want to say, man, to all the young cats out there and even the older ones, older than me, it's a lot more life to live out here, man. When Kenosha police officer Rustin Chesky shot Jacob Blake seven times in his back, it sent shockwaves to some, but mainly disappointment with little surprise. After all, it was Colin Kaepernick's message that black people are preyed upon by police. His protests led his whiteballing and a white supremacist president to say this. Why are African Americans still dying at the hands of law enforcement in this country? And so are white people. So are white people. What a terrible question to ask. In Wisconsin, the revered Green Bay Packers made news. More than $750,000 to the city of Green Bay toward the purchase of police body cameras, a response to August police shooting of Jacob Blake in nearby Kenosha. This man, Mark Murphy, is CEO of the team. He told The Post, the nice thing about the body cams is there's pretty much a consensus these are good things to have. The only people against it are bad cops and criminals. Murphy's last line is severely troubling, here's why. There remains corruption and lack of justice in the Breonna Taylor shooting case. And guess what? There is no footage of the shooting itself. The seven officers who went to Taylor's home at apartment four to conduct a search for drugs and cash shortly before 1 a.m. either weren't wearing body cams or they didn't activate. In San Francisco, California, before illegally raiding a freelance journalist's home last year, SFPD were instructed to not activate their body-worn cameras in apparent violation of the department's policy, according to an internal memo. In Waukegan, Illinois, a police officer involved in a fatal shooting did not turn his body-worn camera on until after the deadly confrontation with an unarmed black couple, Footage released by the police department showed. In Philly, public defender Michael Mellon reviewed 60 arrests between 2018 and 19. Only six had body camera video prior to the person being handcuffed, a violation of the city's body cameras policy. All 60 cases were within the 24th police district in Port Richmond, which has had all patrol officers outfitted with body cams since 2018. Now, there's a lot of points to make here. The first, via Vox. Researchers found that while body cameras are widely seen as a means of changing officer behavior for the better, in many departments the cameras have not had a consistent or significant effect on officer behavior or citizen opinion of police. One activist put it like this, We know from history that police can't police itself, so we need full transparency. Therein lies the crux of this issue. As Georgetown public policy professor Andrea Headley said, the issue of officers not turning on their cameras before an arrest is common. If you know that there's no one necessarily going to be checking, it's not in the front of your mind to make sure that it's on, she said. Even in cases when police officers do keep their cameras on, they may not be saving the video. Body-worn cameras simply haven't served the interests of communities in most places and primarily should be seen as a policing and surveillance tool, said Harlan Yu, the executive director of Upturn a nonprofit focused on progressive technology policy. While the Packers are aiding the use of body cams, the research shows it's a mixed bag and is not preventing what we all know takes place. It's a step, but a minor one at that. What would be a stronger statement is the Packers and its players going further, mandating all body camera footage to be turned on upon an officer putting on their vest, or even as Chuck D put on Instagram, turning off a body camera should be considered destroying evidence.